dear venerable dhamma friends again we are going to start another session of question and answers we'll start with uh, the written questions and uh, inviting if there are any other uh, questions or statements uh, you may present once the written questions are over so i would like to invite our sudhu amdro to read questions Most venerable Swami Vahanse, as advised by you, I was watching the elements at work. The tingling sensations developed into tiny particles vibrating against each other. Salivating process was very prominent. Hands and feet, rhythmic pulse beats turned into tiny circular movements. At the 3 to 4 p.m. sitting yesterday, at the end of the session, Someone spoke loud to be heard over the sound of the rain and I opened my eyes for about a minute since opening the eyes the sound of the rain in the ears occurred in rhythmic waves I noted that the sound of the rain matched my heartbeat sound rising and ebbing this effect didn't last for long though after about 2 minutes things became normal at yesterday's sittings I noted that the episodes of nothingness were less than before although the body elements watch was going well but today's sitting were balanced with many occurrences of nothingness with the elements also showing up well is there something I should do or not do at this stage maybe for the elements to become more prominent thank you for your guidance swami mohansi may you attain nibbana in this very life uh, so early part of the statement it says that uh, new approach and try to observe the elementary particles and they are the tingling sensation and heart beats and again later telling the uh, some sensation in the hands and uh, other parts of the body so try to keep body parts as we as possible and try to see the nature the tingling nature st- stress nerve the movements uh and uh, jerkings any kind of thing so try to withdraw the body part connection and just see its uh, stiffness tension and movements and the uh, vibrations and then you can understand it is uh the element by itself uh, they have to they can't express outside so they are expressing within you so but if you try to understand it related to the body parts liking and disliking can still creep in so take care about just see elements and then you are opening a wide wide field and uh, elements are we can say right in the between in between uh, individual characteristics and the common characteristics so whenever you try to start with the individual characteristics before it can change into the common characters universal characters they represent as uh, elementaries elementary uh, features and they are we must try do away on is a very little advice do away with the attribution to the individual particles and uh, let the elements to run and you may see elements are always speaking to you it is waiting to speak to you and unless otherwise you give a fair chance and it is uh, in the center with the conventional truth to the absolute truth so you must understand you must try try to understand the language of the elements uh, away from the bodily parts and then you easily you can understand the bridging between the conventional truth and the absolute so that particular writer is somewhere in between so facilitate it as much as possible and uh, only simple advice is don't attribute even though it is appearing like that don't attribute it to bodily parts dear bante when one is in mindfulness moments to moments for consecutive 15 minutes without interruption in the present moment will it help to realize anatta and develop anicca do away with mitcha sanya more merit to you bhante 
So it depends, because when and where you are mindful, you are not under the influence of the time and space. You can't measure uh, mindfulness with these yardsticks. So therefore, when and where you try to be mindful, uh, at the beginning it appears like within the frame of the time and space, when and where the mindfulness is going to take the momentum and become steadfast, the time and space become insignificant and you will learn the art how to get the momentary mindfulness and uh, steadfast mindfulness and go beyond the space and time. So under such circumstances, you may see some other uh, new dimensions or this is the way it is gathering the momentum. Dear Bhante, when doing sitting meditation, the breath disappears in no time and can be in a calm, happy state for more than one hour. This is experienced for more than two years. Still, the calm state and mindfulness. I do meditation daily, regularly. From the questions asked by the yogis during this retreat, it appears that most of them, the majority, seem to be in this void state with the disappearance of the breath, primary object. All have achieved this state by following your simple, a accurate guidance and advice. Please let us know how to proceed further to develop meditation in order to advance. This state leads to path, uh, does this state lead to path entry? As time is limited, please direct us. Thiruvan Sarman. So this is a kind of an alternative to the materialistic world. So without leaving the materialistic world, you are developing another perspective and uh, from that you can look at the materialistic world. From the materialistic world point of view, you can see the space. So now your mind is somewhat balanced and this balanced mind knows what to do the next. But your rational mind never knows because it knows only the materialistic side only. So therefore, as far as you familiarize this state where the breath ceases to exist and still the mindfulness is there, the seasoning effect, the mastering of the same, uh, it is very slow, but you have to regularly keep on practice, but you can understand what is happening there. Even though you go into this nothingness, maybe one year or two years, never mind, there's a kind of a precipitation and clarity takes place and when and where you go to nothingness and once it's familiarized, you can understand what is the more preferable state in your mind when you see objects or when you do not see objects. So there our mind is sometimes have preferences with object or without object. Without object, some people consider as boring monotonous, no events, not dramatic. So therefore they develop uh, uh, dislike. Instead they like the object. Some other people say objects means defilements, object disappears and there is no object, more solitude, more uh, happiness and so you have to understand which is the state of mind you are in. And uh, neither is good. You have to understand having object or not having object happening completely in the cause and effect relationship without your involvement let it happen don't be choosy don't understand this is good or this is bad if such a thing happen recognize that is the function of the consciousness consciousness is, is try to divide it and try to give a preference to one side this is the point where tension start to set in or frustration sets in. So the moment you understand nothingness and they're having something, both of them are just uh, same, the two sides of the same coin and it is something happening rather than mine. So your mindfulness become mature and understand how to not carry the way by the vicissitudes of the world, have or have not pain or pleasure, gain or lost, popularity or unpopularity. Uh, so you don't feel it, uh, whether you're advancing or not.
But if you can maintain that state longer, definitely it is an advancement. That is must be, that must be your attitude. Then never you get the opportunity to go to the cessation of object and be there. Let the mind to familiarize it, season it as long as possible, and then there is a kind of a maturity takes place, and uh, that. Uh, Specifically in Chula Sunyata Sutta and the Ananja Sappaya Sutta in Singhala, uh, I have gone very detailed into that. I am not going to take time for that. But simply I can say, more you familiarize it, more mind is advancing. So uh, don't worry about the tangibility of your advancement, but please continue with the uh, same timetable or more and more engage with this timetable. Dear Bhante, here is my progress report. For the first three days of the retreat, I was at ease, observing the in-out breath and drifting in and out of the, of the void. However, from the fourth day, the general pattern changed. A great tension arose in my back and shoulders, and this captured my attention. I discovered that the more I watched it, the more I clung to it, so frustration arose alongside it. The whole of the past week has been the story of the return journey to my breath as primary object. The tension goes away one day, I note relief, then it comes back again the next day. I have made some interesting discoveries over the course of this week as I investigated the tension. I saw how it was directly related to irritation and anger that arises in me when other people act in a way that I don't like. I have also become more skillful at letting go of that irritation and consequently the tension. Yesterday afternoon during the thunderstorm, the return journey was dramatic. My upper body was physically pulled in different directions as the pain and anger were released. Thank you, Bonte, for your wise instructions this week. I wish you all the best for your forthcoming trip overseas with metta and respect. Too many people are not happy my going abroad. Even you all are wishing, thank you. But uh, the point there is, whenever you find that appearing repeatedly appearing tension, repeatedly appearing anger, uh, is a clear indication you are directly face to face with then with the defilement, and it is on the way disappearing. You really feel the battlefield. You feel again and again it is happening, and you are also not giving up. You also give again and again apply in the return journey. One day you can see it's gone, gone forever. It is not um, uh, avoiding. It is not uh, escapism just by facing. So the Buddha has taken enough pain to explain when and where you sit calm and serene, nothing happens. It's a just wastage of time. When and where you are fully aware that defilement is coming again and again, but still you are applying your mindfulness, that is the only time you are dealing with defilements. And uh, then you can see the defilements are slowly, slowly disappearing. You are win-win situation. And hilarious, you feel the, the mindfulness. So therefore, vipassana yogis or vipassana meditation is always welcome this kind of turbulence, troubles. But you never give up. Let it happen again, you apply. And you feel like finished. No, next day again it happens. Again you desperately apply your mindfulness and ultimately it disappearing. So this is the way by dealing and do away with defilement, you can make this whole sacred. More and more you shed defilements here, the meditation all become more and more sacred. So you are welcome to make it more sacred more and more. Walking meditation. This morning around 4 o'clock, I started to do walking meditation, but I was feeling unsteady on my feet. So I quickly went to the meditation hall and started sitting meditation. In sitting meditation, I was watching the in-breath and the out-breath and within a few seconds, it came to nothingness, absolutely nothing everywhere. I was in this state for about 20 minutes. 
What I want to know is, is it absolutely essential to do walking meditation before sitting meditation with metta? Yes. Just like in Sri Lankan way, before eating you have to wash your hands. Likewise, always, the Sayadu oh, Pandita says, whenever the vehicle is in the garage for a few days, before you go to, a, before go starting a journey, start the engine and run it little bit, engine to get warm up and mobilized, uh, because uh, it has to recharge its own dynamo or the battery through the dynamo, and then only the engine is ready for the journey. So likewise, when and where you sit before the next seat, you have to have a little bit of uh, walking meditation. And after the sleep, overnight, little bit of walking meditation. If you have a serious sickness and if you are recovering, have a walking meditation. After a meal, have a walking meditation. Then mind, mind is or body is mobilized. So therefore, always try to give the due dose of the walking meditation. And it, you never feel it's in the short run. But the long run in your meditative life... That is the secret. So th therefore don't uh, do away. Look down towards walking meditation. When and where possible, give 50-50. Venerable Swami Vahansa, is dreaming a result of Chitta Sangskara? When the mind becomes more mindful, will there be no dreams? Please explain. So even uh, not sleeping, even in meditation... When and where the, your primary object is disappearing, uh, for the first time maybe, a lot of states where almost you are in dream or half dream, uh, that is the, the floating in between concept and reality. You don't know it is something mind-made or it, you don't know something it is reality. Sometimes you hear sounds or see uh, shapes and different colors or sometimes moving of the body, sensations. Uh, some people talk about salivation and the taste. Really, some people complain about the smells and uh, mind objects. So there you don't know whether it is uh, um, the reality or concept. And exactly the same thing in half sleep, this uh, dreaming happens. So... At that moment, when you are in a dreaming state, you are all the pent up uh, problems or suppress or repressed problems or repressed things come to surface. Catharsis starts. So, therefore, if you can let that kind of a thing go or froth or catharsis, uh, mind become healed. That is what you do in the in the psycho the psychotherapy or in uh, hypnotism or in free association. Let that other thing to come out. So what is coming out is your suppressed things, or your repressed thing, or pent up energies or psychological wounds. They come out without paying anything for a, a psychotherapist. Or counselor, you can be on your counselor, you are the patient, mindfulness is the technique, uh, they are about to come. And while you are in sitting, you can experience the dream. And uh, at a time, you develop kind of a state where the, you feel everything is uh, mano pubbangama, mano setha, mano maya. Mind is the forerunner. Mind is the most important thing and everything is mind-made. So that kind of uh, conclusion also sometimes you are arriving at when you are going to the deeper sense of the materiality or disappearance of the materiality, everything appears like mind-made. So that is why some people yet to uh, uh, ready to understand meditation as something mystic. It is not mystic. It is a floating between the concept and reality so if you are if you have kind of fear or if you have any kind of a, a phobia a mind will never progress beyond that in order to go beyond that you have to sacrifice your body and the life then only you can uh, 
take that advantage uh, take that adventurous uh, situation so many people are not ready many are they love their body as well as the life so therefore they are not ready to take this risk they are not risk lovers so their meditation will be stopped due to the fear and uncertainty so therefore let the dream happens day dreaming and night dreaming meditation you get the day dreaming and in the night you see the night dreaming both of them are nothing but the same venerable bhante when attention is on the posture the gross feelings of the elements are felt less now instead a flowing stream of energy is felt throughout the body sometimes i experience the whole body breaking up i feel disconnected and as if an i does not exist the mind then feels very still and alert and comes to a point where it enters or squeezes into another area it stays there for a short while and then emerges out again this emerging in and out happens several times please explain what it is much meta this is sometimes very interesting some people come out with different models one thing is if you look at a bee hive when the when the all the bees are at the hive you can see the bee hive in a shape and uh, you can consider it as a one unit so usually it happens when the the about to rain so once the sun came the bees are disp- spread going out so what happened to the bee hive disappears when you again the rain happens the bees are coming and come into the same agglomeration then you see the hive otherwise they are gone so that is the what it happens if you see the body as body body means an agglomeration or it is not a unity it is not one entity it is a coming up coming together of many many things so whenever it sees one half a state is called going to pieces without falling apart thing is there a lot of cracks but not fallen apart suppose that uh, such a thing drop these are the cracks that is going to break it off but now you can see going to pieces but not fallen apart so that is the state first in the half way you understand my body is not a unit unit it is not an entity it is a kind of agglomeration and uh, writing this uh, writing about this it says in the chinese and japanese culture when you are using uh, china ware or ceramics more and more you use it you can see lot of cracks and not fallen apart and that is very expensive more and more, more cracks are there that means it very historical so in japanese the when the when the thing is very historical or archaeological lot of cracks are there but not fallen apart they are very expensive likewise when the med- your your knowledge is increasing you understand there is no unit on the earth everything is but agglomeration even it represent as a one entity one unit your wisdom never happy it always try to analyze and see it is broken it is uh, going to, it has gone into pieces even though it has fall, not fallen apart and uh, the same thing when abla chancha one day uh, when he is giving a sermon or discussion one person bought a glass of water then he is asking what will happen this uh, to this glass or tumbler if it is fallen down cracked so now it is not cracked but its potential to crack is different from a wooden thing it's a glass so this whether it's dropped or not its potential to break is there so when if you wish to do it put down and see that's where it is broken so if you can see the potential even before it is breaking that is what you call the wisdom this one day it is will broke if you fall and down broke finish so therefore even if it's before breaking you have to have that ability everyone is going to die everyone is going to old age and diseases so therefore why so much of fear 
So this is what you see your body also. Sometimes agglomeration has a beehive and sometimes individual bees go on separate and there you can't see the shape. The manner is different. But even if you can see the beehive, if you can see it is agglomeration of individual bees, there's no such a co thing called a, or a, such an entity called hive. It's a collective name. The body is that. If you never you have that kind of a collective name, your love or your desire is reduced because you know it is gone, it has already gone into pieces, even though it is not uh, fallen apart. At the death, again, it is gone to pieces and fallen apart. While you are living, gone to pieces but not fallen apart. So that is a difference. So therefore, no much of worries about uh, this old days, sickness and death. So whether you worry or not, you are going to have it. If you are worrying, you will go first, um, faster. If you have no worries, the same thing happens in a slow manner. So this is a good thing, uh, happening in a very digestible manner, a palatable way, just facilitate it to happen. Uh, one day it will make you for any adventure. Dear Bhante, at the beginning it was difficult to do walking meditation, but after coming here, I followed the timetable and did walking meditation up at the Udamalua. After four days, I can walk without noting with I can walk without noting effortlessly. Then feel the coarseness of the sand how the sand pricks the feet, no thoughts. Is this also leading to disappearance of primary object? When going to dana, always mindful, or I try to, few thoughts, eat concentrating on food after your advice. Does this too lead to voidness and mind without defilements? Now mind is very calm and I have more energy. Please advise, may you be blessed with good health and strength to spread the dhamma throughout the world. So if we are to talk about the walking meditation, uh, you may see uh, the with or without noting how the sole of the left foot and the right foot and ultimately when you familiarize it, you can see the experience is not limited to the left foot, left sole or right sole, that it is moving along the your skeleton everywhere whenever you are walking. And uh, still you may see the most prominent thing is the soil touching the uh, soil. When it is, when you keep on practicing, uh, you can see the whole body is walking as a one unit and uh, it is happening effortlessly. So that is the time you are really doing walking meditation. Of course, at that time you are doing nothing. Till that you were doing. You were noting and you try to see the left leg and the right leg kind of thing. But after a while, you feel you are walking. The whole entity is walking. And no any effort. No self necessary. No volition necessary. It is happening. So that is the point you start to release. The, the lack of tension. Lack of stress going to happen. So body is walking and you can see as a second person. So they are, the, everything happened without a volition, without a will due to the past momentum and you can understand. So when that happens, almost like in a sitting meditation, you feel that calmness, you feel that uh, frictionless way, effortless way. And once you develop it, even if you are going for a long journey, if you are alone, you can put into that mode. The body will walk and when, whenever you are walking like that, you never get tired, you never get exhausted. Uh, you can really understand what is the optimum speed and that will happen. This is the way you understand your body, so therefore you are on the way. Uh, let the body to walk or do walking meditation, we say effortless way. And once that happens, 
give as long as possible don't worry you whether you are not you or not don't worry whether you see the discriminatedly left leg and the right leg you know totality i am walking i am not sitting i am not standing i am not sleeping that's enough dear swami vahansa when doing walking meditation i feel the roughness of the carpet to my feet but after some time i walk without thoughts unintentionally without effort feel calm and happy earlier i hated to do walking meditation the legs started to ache but now it is a pleasure to walk i can do more hours oh can i do more hours of walking meditation sometimes i feel sleepy while doing sitting meditation then get up and walk while going about for instance to dana i go mindfully with very little thoughts is this correct please guide me tirwan sadna so only thing is uh, unless otherwise it is raining don't select this indoor meditation uh, areas go to the sand bed it's a luxury a sand bed is a luxury so when the time permits do it and uh, the difference between walking on a indoor and the the artificial floors and walking in the outdoor in the sand completely two different things so that will open up more and uh, whenever walking happens the best thing even though you have a, you become a lover of the walking meditation do 50 50 if it is one hour walking go and sit one hour and that way uh, balance the health and the exercises and easy when and where you familiarize the walking meditation to cope up with the multitasking and sitting walking meditation in a sit in between multitasking is too much of activity sitting is too less activities walking meditation is the pace maker in between so therefore uh, soon you get up from the sitting it happen to go to directly for the multitasking it is too big the change you have to have little bit of walking and then ready and after too much of multitasking if you go and sit uh, that also change is too much if you can have little bit of walking then that is the pace making is very harmonizing these three stages so therefore walking meditation is a kind of a versatile thing and uh, to emphasize i would say not a single religious master prescribe walking meditation except buddha there was buddha telling the advantage of walking meditation is enumerating fighting one thing is if you wish to see the end of your endurance walking meditation is the only one preserving energy to see the end otherwise you will give up halfway so much of tolerance it is developing so if you are not walking meditation your journey will not be finished dear bante about 3 days ago a small black puppy was left here at the monastery outside the meditation hall i asked the office to please look after it until someone can take it home it is still there today outside shivering and covered in fleas i find this very distressing I feel that watching my breath and meditating is pointless if there is no compassion or kindness towards others especially animals. I don't want to harden my heart which is what I will have to do if I stay here for the rest of the retreat. Pre- please advise. I didn't you had to just please read slowly. Re- you may repeat it again. Dear Bonte, about 3 days ago a small black puppy was left here at the monastery outside the meditation hall i asked the office to please look after it until someone can take it home it is still there today outside shivering and covered in fleas i find this very distressing i feel that watching my breath and meditating is pointless if there is no compassion or kindness towards others especially animals I don't want to harden my heart which is what I will have to do if I stay here for the rest of the retreat please advise yeah, that uh, even I don't have an answer for that and uh, 
it is it's natural, it is natural in sri lanka whenever there are stray dogs they parturited they put into near the temple and they will go into the temple and uh, no one is taking care but the people come and put it inside so where the answer they simply there is a alligator come and sweep come and eat everything and there was a python there is only one python take care of the two both the mountains so whenever you find the puppy or any sick animal it swallow so what to do and uh, when the rabies time happens or skin diseases happen uh, these dogs and others are spreading so much so my simple principle is don't entertain animals here but there are some people do it they do half way if it is so take into a cage or food take food give food and take care and then no problem then i have to talk not with the animal with that person but they are just giving food because it is coming off free of charge and become compassionate uh, only for that extent not take care so if someone is willing to take i'll give all the dogs i'll be very happy i heard there is a one lady in uh, mount lavinia if there anyone in form she will take and take care about so i told one of the people be uh, taking care about the dog then i told i will give the any funds put the dog into a decent place and take care not let in the mystery uh, give me little food and kind of thing so we are i am without any answer for this situation uh, because uh, the Uh, Sri Lanka uh, the you can see the situation in the stray dogs even the municipal council have no answer unless otherwise colombo candy and other places they are stray going so if someone can give a answer besides this retreat am will come any any person even not uh, participating in the retreat and a uh, few days ago some of our workers that beaten by monkeys and they hospitalized and they 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 suspect they are suspicion is rabies anyone coming the, the dana people wish to give through windows so all the monkeys are right now and that compassion i don't consider as a as a healthy one give a complete answer if possible and uh, no problem but uh, we my my objective is not the animal care this center is not for that if someone is doing take it the responsibility i am also happy to contribute for a decent answer not this like type of this so therefore not it is that hardening of our mind we are living in the society we are specifically uh, centers like this uh, run in a very traditional way and uh, we are not Uh, like a five star hotel we are not uh, the financially oriented people a lot of people are coming a lot of people are uh, participating very difficult to cope up uh, with this uh, problem regarding the animals we complain to the the uh, vana jeevi vana jeevi means that uh, wildlife to come and uh, do something because a lot of people are moving here workers meditators coming for uh, dana and visitors and uh, they are attacking they are attacking visitors monkeys and even the dogs so what to do no control i am responsible but i have no answer so please take time if you have any kind of a decent answer we can or discuss it over the table and do something but it is a incessant question day by day they come and uh, leave here the puppies i can give in uh, wholesale garu swamin bhanse walking meditation was automatically done after i began the sitting meditation breath disappeared in no time i entered into darkness then a thought arose and disappeared in between two thoughts solitude prevailed this gap of solitude spread on the second day 
as soon as I sat, breath stopped. At once I blurred into the darkness. No thoughts, no pain, no anything. My body was not there, but I felt I was alive. Solitude spread endlessly, far and far away. There was no limit, but in every sitting this does not happen. Please comment. Teruan Satna with Metta. So last, in the last, one of the last question, we went, on, went into the going to pieces without falling apart. Uh, whenever it is going to pieces, you find cracks. You find uh, clevises. Ultimately, when you meditate more and more, clevises overcome everything. You never find any substance. That is how the friction reduces. So at the beginning, you find the going to pieces without falling apart. But later, the cracks are the one it is improving and increasing. Ultimately, you can see, even though there are some so-called materiality, the immateriality is the second nature. So when the mind is ad uh, adjusting it and uh, preparing or acclimatizing to understand this space, or take this as the second nature, uh, it is appear like negative or nihilistic or cessation. So the world or your natural mind never happy to really accept it because it is already dwelling and based upon something positive. Through positive, whenever you are to see the negative or the see the antimatter through matter, it is not scientific like. So this is happening slowly, slowly. Uh, for example, when and where are you to see the gap in between uh, end of the out breath and the beginning of the in breath? It is a very tiny one you see it. More and more you to practice, that gap is increasing. Ultimately you can't see any breath, only you see the gap. And then you see, I see the space. I see uh, no breath. So that is the way you understand what you see in the normal rational mind is a kind of a mirage. When and where you go into the deep meditation, you, everything that you said yes available, you will see or see through and say no, not available. The very same person. That is how the change is taking place. Not only that, one day you will say no, not available situation is the second nature. That is the more you, you feel at home. That's the place only you find the liberation. So therefore you say yes or available. It is the torturing part. So that change many accept. Before the Buddha and after the Buddha, not possible within this life. They thought it may be something different life. But the meditator can understand whatever you see, whatever you say yes, available, hard, concrete, see through, ultimately at the beginning you see little cracks and crevices, ultimately you can see so much of the emptiness and so-called availability or concrete nature is disappearing. So that is very hardly believable, so that is what is happening. So please facilitate and uh, though it appears like a challenging you and threatening you, it is the, what you call knowledge. You have to facilitate it. Dear Venerable Bhante, when in sitting meditation I started mindful about the posture, sometimes I feel pain in my left chest, must be my heart. Even with that pain, I feel I can concentrate and I feel my mind going up and up. Please advise with metta. So um, the, I had to present the model to understand this. Maybe the, the best in our brain, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. And the left hemisphere is the one taking care of the rationality, deductive thinking, pleasure principle, suppressing others, tension, frustration, knowledge, everything. The right side is very aesthetic, thinking about the holistic and it never upmanship and domineering. Sometimes, so when in a, in a, 
day to day life left side is only part is working it never allow this holistic part to work uh, suppressing and uh, more and more you learn it more and more you become uh, fulfilled in the economic and no uh, politically your left side become overwhelmingly suppressing the right side and there are some models in the world they say is if something damage happened in the left leg left brain you are totally dis- become dis- uh, despair and you more you cannot live more as a normal person it go paralytic your left brain is damaged and there are there are there is a case she knows definitely she a new, she was a neuroscientist now in future of her life is completely paralytic there's a the uh, bleeding inside the left leg left brain but she can feel the laughing sound of the right brain she says if you are a buddhist you may claim this as the nibbana my whole life ruined there is a bleeding inside the brain and you lose the memory everything gone but i can feel my right brain is very happy it is completely laughing and giggling i can't believe three times she is explaining it theoretically i know i am finished ruined but the other side is smiling so that change is the what the buddha says whenever you leave aside your household life and come live in this uh, monastic life monastic life is not your fulfillment it is not up to your complete satisfaction there is a friction there is a lack of facilities and uh, not like you don't you don't like you don't feel like at home and this friction if you can make a reason to be glad or renunciate at happiness definitely you are going to successful in the meditation if you are always worrying about the lack of facilities and uh, not the homely feeling that means you will never meditate you are not a meditator you will never progress so this friction you find in the monastery you must try to find a reason to be glad and make a re- make a point to be rapturous because that keep away my household questions i am now in the monastery even though i have little bit of difficulty that difficulty is a reason for me to be glad and uh, that is continuing again and again so each and every point where you depressed and regret there's a reason to be glad if you need further reference and for the clarification read polyanna and polyanna will teach you it is your game to find a reason to be glad under any circumstances this is the the best definition for metta bhavana so if you find only the the one sided angle uh, you find you never find any reason to be glad under pain but the buddha says if it is not so you are not a vipassana yogi each and every vipassana yogi see pain is the forerunner and the precursor for the nibbana because the first and foremost thing is dukkha arya satcha noble truth of suffering is the first truth and when it is coming closer you must be happy that is why you become not uh, commoner that's how that is how you become aryans uh, the vinnan via you see the noble truth uh, of course you are happy so make it if possible on theoretical basis and rational basis then only your meditation will be gaining and gathering the momentum dear bante i notice my posture here i am lying down i notice my in breath at the nostrils i observe the breath brush against the upper lip enter the nostrils then feel cool against my throat I observe my lungs and diaphragm expand then contract with the same breath. I observe the same out breath on my upper lip and brush warmly against my arm or foot whichever is in direct line with the airflow. My breath feels comforting and peaceful and I am happy. I try to follow the in breath from the same point where I last observed the out breath. 
but I can't. Please advise me on the following. A. How to extend the point from which I first noticed the in-breath. B. I think this is not one-pointedness. Am I correct? Can one-pointedness shift from point to point with mindfulness? C. How do I improve from here? This has happened for three to four years. Much merit to you for all that you do for us. May you attain your spiritual goal in this life itself. Terwan Salman. The, all the three questions is summarized in the, in the first question. Uh, when and where are you face to face with one object, so to say, the primary object? More and more you familiarize, you are bound to see all the possible facets. At the beginning you see one or two facets and you recognize it with these facets. But uh, whenever it is changing, you feel like lack of mindfulness or lack of relationship with the object. But you have to patiently observe. More and more you observe, you find all the other facets. When it is happening, when you are about to see the, all the other facets, you master the object from right from the beginning through the middle to the end and uh, concentration sets it. Otherwise, if you have find out the uh, relationship between the mindfulness and the concentration, every kind of with little bit of acquaintance with the primary object, it never happens. So you have to somehow the other tackle the primary object and familiarize it or maximize it uh, to see all the facets whenever it is expanding with uh, relationship with the, all the facets, they need the concentration and all the other uh, uh, lacking thing will come into being. In in giving a commentary to the Vishuddhi Magga, the that teacher is telling Yata Pakatang Vipassana Biniveso Pacha Anupahatantena Pi Upayana Upatta Upatta Pitva Samasitabang. Start with whatever the peculiar part, what is the prominent part, keep and then keep the object face to face it and continue. When you are going to continue, definitely the unprominent parts, unconspicuous parts, bound to arise. Totality will come. So therefore, take care about the first question and we associate primary object not with that idea it is the same facet is coming with the openness or anicca sanya. Any facet can happen then definitely uh, the mindfulness which lead you to see the, all the facets when it's happening, the balance between samatha vipassana, wisdom and the concentration, everything will take, take place. Dear Swami Vahansa, when we are at home, anger and hatred come several times during everyday life. Even without us doing anything wrong, family members scold us. When silence, it's worse. Past hints saying after going for meditation, we have changed. Anyway, I get hatred feelings towards them. When we sit for meditation, these ill will feelings come and disturb meditation. After some time back at the primary object. Please advise. Teruan Salaman. So only hatred can be created, given by our dear and near ones. Unknown people never create any hatred. So therefore, dear and near one is your selection. You are the one selecting. So you can see, our mind is always selecting the hatred. So therefore, it is your own baby. Don't put it. And therefore, ask house, householders, shall you put up some Notice in the house, wherever, whenever you have anger, count up to ten. Ekka, dekka, tuna, hatra, pa, haya, hata, hata, name, dahai. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So whenever someone is losing anger, become angry, you can just point it to the board. So likewise, if other people also accept that their anger is coming often, they have an agreement like that, or oh, otherwise, uh, the Buddha is very clearly indicates our desire and the anger only appearing 
because of our dear and near ones. So you are utterly responsible for that. And you are the one get attached to them. And uh, whenever you are to be away with that, you are the one unhappy. So therefore we are all sadists, masochists, creating suffering, asking troubles, asking for fear, the hatred. So when, when, whenever you understand it, it's become the biggest joke in the world. Biggest joke in the life. Because we are the very people creating and asking and con- giving the conducive conditions for this uh, hate to happen. So therefore, associate as much as people as a yet another person, no dear and near one. It's very difficult because people consider this as callousness. People consider this as a lack of feelings. But the feelingful people are the uh, real cursor or precursors for this hatred. Have a clear terms with the others if possible. And I know it is difficult because I had about eight to nine years uh, living as a lay person. Still I know definitely one day I am going to take off and relationship. So they are asking me why you are not marrying, why you are not doing this and that. Then I said, no, no, not in a hurry, I will, I would do later. So I was just postponing and in association I understood that that is the language they understand. Just keep the relationship physically but no any emotional, no any, any kind of thing, just physical availability is there. It appears like unhuman, possible. It is possible. Lay, still, you may find with after living so, renunciation is still easier. Happy. Possible. So this is without thinking renunciation, that is fighting happens. So apply that also as an alternative. There is no renounced people born in the world. Each and everyone is born Household and renounced. So why why can't you also can take that step? Giving the message to your family members as a setting an example to the Dhamma and giving more and more solitude. That uh, radical answer is that. Oh, otherwise, Pemato Jayati Soko, Tannai Jayati Soko. It's a very famous way the Buddha, have present, Buddha has presented. So put some captions on your day in the door frame inside. So when your problem happens, you can show, you can show it to other people. Dear Venerable Bhante, after a few minutes of walking meditation, I sat down for sitting meditation and started mindfulness about the body posture. No sooner I feel that my whole body vibrates and there is nothing I can feel about the body line or body. Please advise. So is it helpful for meditation or is it a threat or is it a distraction? I would like to know. Then only I can contribute or I can participate in this. Otherwise, if that open, I have to assume. It is always I am wrong. Does that particular person can give us some more information when that vibration happens? Do you feel fearful or do you feel advancing or what kind of a, what kind of a mind you had? So if not you are presenting, next time when you are asking, just add that also as a last sentence, what is your impression for this experience? Teruan Saranai. Venerable Bhante, what I heard in your sermon, sir, is not to hinder the feelings, they should be disclosed. In my case, most of the time, I never show my anger to the other one, but I know I am annoyed or dislike or angry. I feel that I should not blast it out. Therefore, I would like to get clarification on disclosing of feelings with metta. You have to read the early part, please. There was a few words. What I heard in your sermon, sir, is not to hinder the feelings. They should be disclosed. 
In my case, most of the time, I never show my anger to the other one. So, therefore, it is a kind of a cultural or uh, restrainment not to expose it. Uh, but when the anger happens, if it is not exposing, uh, it may be pent up energy is uh, settling down inside also, within yourself, if it is not putting out. So, after a while, after accumulation, either you become sick or you have to have a very big anger with that particular agent. So that is the way usually you are becoming so angry with other people and killing and committing suicide and all the kind of thing. Instead, so the other thing is then and there you uh, express your anger. So piecemeal basis, it is disappearing. Both techniques are valid. So the early part in your meditative spiritual life, the Buddha is uh, the prescribing the second method, restrainment. That is what you call sila. Don't kill, don't steal, uh, don't have harsh words, don't have that kind of kind of thing. That means restrain yourself, and it is kind of artificial thing. But when you come into the vipassana level, uh, they are naturally become weaker. They are not in the very transgressional form or obsessional form. When it come to the uh, latent tendencies, like very thin down, there you can directly deal with them and let them come out, not at the very gross level. So therefore, Vipassana Yogi is the only person, do not practice escapism. Face, face, face it face to face with, as it is, but at that time your emotions are not very gross, not very aggressive and that is the end, that's the end of the chapter. So therefore, when and where time permits, you may deal it with when and where anger happens, not expressing others, but you are facing, you are not hiding, I mean, you are not restraining it, let the anger happens, and you can see anger means full of energy. It is like a, the, the nuclear energy. Anger is a full of energy, and you can use it if you feel a little sleepy, introduce a little bit of anger, the sleepy will utterly disappear. When you are in anger, think about the sleepiness. You can't think even. So therefore you must have a little bit of anger whenever you use this as like condiments for your curries. You must have a little bit of this and that, then only you get the real uh, padama in singhala or harmony. So we need it. And at that time, whether it is you use it or hide it, it has come to a certain restrainment. But in Vipassana, you are really working with it. And in Sat- Satipatthana, last Satipatthana, Dhammanupassana, the Buddha is directly saying, Santangva Ajhattam. Vyapadan Santimi Ajatam Vyapadoj Pajanati. Whenever you you feel irritated and full of hatred, you understand now in my stream of consciousness the hatred is there. You're not suppressing and you see the rising of hatred, cessation of the hatred. So that means you are fully in the armed situation with the other mindfulness and faith and uh, uh, precepts, so you can tackle. At the beginning, you are not doing so, you restrain them. So therefore, at the beginning, at the sila uh, uh, restrainment or morality restrainment, you are restrained. But in the vipassana, uh, you let come out as it is. So you have to understand when and where to use these two techniques, even though they are contradicted to each other. A single person has to use it. Most Venerable Bhante, thank you for the advice yesterday. I think I had a few instances of experiencing the voidness today. Once my breath became subtler and subtler and no more inner chatting, there came a few instances that I felt as if I'm going through a tunnel, but no noise, no breath, and felt like my ears were blocked but it was not dark like in a tunnel. Is this the dwelling in the void you explained in the Dhamma sermon? 
I experience it for some time, and time to time, about four times. The sitting was from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. I find that the best time for me is from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Can an individual select a best time like this? I would like to know whether this is a correct statement so that I can plan my day accordingly when I go home. Thank you and much merit to you for all the guidance. May all your desires be fulfilled in this life itself. Uh, I also will agree that uh, when I get the complete day free, best of my sittings, uh, specifically best of my concentration, happen between two meals, both morning, after the breakfast and before the lunch. So when I was in Pandita Rama, I used to take this opportunity but in Nisanwane, I never get it because morning time we have allocated different work. So because the day is uh, fresh and uh, full, my stomach is full of food and energy and uh, no much of repercussions because uh, you are soon after the sleep and uh, this is happening. So uh, whenever you are planning, you are best thing you must do in the morning hours. Morning hours are full of energy, freshness. So sittings, it is natural. But maybe there are some other uh, people with some other likings and dislikings also. And indicate that a few occasions uh, can feel this nothingness happen in the three, four occasions. And imagine if this nothingness is the reality, that is the, the nature how should you, how much you familiarize this nothingness? Uh, simply we can say practice up to the point where the nothingness become your second nature. That means each and every moment with all the desire and the hatred and sleepiness and fighting, you must understand nothingness never leave you, even though you are you never expect it. That is the way you can make the nothingness as your best friend, not only between the in at the end of the outbreath and the beginning of the new uh, inbreath. Even in breath and outbreath, you can see it because it is a natural thing, uh, just like the space. So when and where you see it is called in in Pali, it is called ajat avakasa, avakasa or ajat avakasa. Ajat avakasa means no, you can got get knots. No problems can happen whenever the nothingness happens. All the problems are in the having. When there is not, not having, no problems. So therefore, develop and maximize it or familiarize it or uh, season it till it becomes your second nature. Most Venerable Bhante, Sitting Meditation Falling into sleep after 15 to 20 minutes of starting and start bending down the head at many intervals was my first question to you a few days ago. I am undergoing the same problem again and again, only after 30 minutes. When I reached almost floor level, I awake. However much I tried, unable to bring the mind to calm state to do the meditation. Also, I feel very lazy. I am mindful to do my meditation at the beginning. Please advise me with metta. So if it is uh, relating to the collapsing of the body, uh, you, I appreciate that uh, with the instruction that I have given, if you have taken time to see whenever the, your mind is face to face with the primary object, more and more association with the primary object, the collapsing happens. So, first you have to do, what you have to do is make sure when that is happening, your mind is with the primary object or not. If it is not, you may get interview with the posture. If it is with primary object, let the posture to be whatever it may be, develop the relationship with the primary object. But here it is not clearly indicated, but the, the brave nature is there, even it is collapsing, even going to the ground level, you practice, you keep on doing. Please check whether this, when it is happening, when this collapsing or bending happen, your relationship with, with the primary object is yes or no, 
accordingly you have to practice if it is no you can involve with your body but what i guess is it is happening usually when and where the object and the mind become face to face a line then only collapsing happens so forget about the body just develop the relationship later we can tackle the uh, the body collapsing uh, after once you confirm that your mind is with face to face with the primary object can that particular person give answer here or uh, not happy or if it is so please continue with that and when you are writing please give that information also in if you are ever to write again how many more questions um two okay dear bonte according to your dhamma talk one must learn to listen when somebody talks and then give your answer or opinion how can we develop this state of mindfulness when somebody makes you angry by action how to avoid getting involved by words or actions by cultivating mindfulness and yoni so mani sikare can this anger be curtailed please advise with metta ps if one is accused without doing anything wrong how to react with metta so this is simply how to make the anger as your primary object can we take anger as your primary object simply yes so when the when you it someone is doing whatever may be you are the person getting angry see the symptoms and early signs of anger when they were available just note it as anger 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 and if it is frequently happening and uh, it is natural to call this as your primary object and the second thing is if someone is accusing you without any your due involvement you must be happy that's the way your past karmic uh, the balance is been dealt with so upanishad sahaja used to say when someone is accusing and if you are not uh, involved in you are not uh, due you must try your best to not to create new karma now not to create new involvement not to create any volitional activities let that happen where without any friction that is the yogi so instead if you are going to argue and says how can you accuse me i am not the person doing it you are wrong and kind of thing you are accumulating starting another cycle so yogi is a person let the other people get involved with karmic work but you must try to not to start something not to initiate something then you are winning the game otherwise perpetuation of the mistake so therefore i would say if you are a person always get angry you are a wise person anger and the wisdom is very close friends so you have to just turn you have to get that energy of anger and uh, turn it turn into the wisdom uh, quick enlightenment very electric kind of people and don't do it get angry with me for telling like that venerable bante while practicing sitting meditation watching the start middle and the end of the in breath made me calm and peaceful after some time going on looking for the gap at the end of the in breath made me turn to the gaps in the sounds birds chirping forced insects rahaya sounds sounds of trishas and tractors in all these the gap was noticed i felt calm and happy watching the gaps in the sounds is it the nirodaya please explain with metta is it the nirodaya nirodaya so that uh, uh, but whenever you see the gap and you feel appeased you feel calm and quiet you can say it is nirodha whenever you see the gap you get excited and fearful and doubtful that cannot be recognized as nirodha so the same appearance same observation can lead to two things depending on your temperaments so if you can see the gaps and you feel again and again to see it in different different ways and consider and feel contented 
that is you are uh, doing nirodha anupassana see the cessation more and more you cessation more and more you are at peace but if you get angry if you get agitated or irritated that cannot be known as Uh, Nero, so therefore you have to say, whenever you see this kind of a cessation of the in-breath or any other sounds or birds chirping, do you feel contented? Do you feel peaceful? Then it's a good sign to correctly say that is Nero, Nero Dhanu Pasana. Okay, we have taken 20 minutes extra, so... sorry if there are any other questions i am not going to invite in this session and uh, we are going to take this 40 minutes for the walking meditation we will be meeting at about 3 o'clock thank you very much for the participation